Uh, hello, Brassic Gamer here. Um, so, uh, eBay. I, I know I mention eBay in nearly every video that I do, but this one's hilarious because I wanted one of these, okay, because I've got a bunch of DV tapes with uh, footage from like my kids and stuff from about 13 years ago. And the DV cam that I had wasn't reading them properly, so the, it was the heads are dirty or something like that, and it just, I couldn't clean it. So I thought either the tapes are degraded, which would be odd, because I wouldn't expect all of them to be degraded, or it's just a crap DV cam. So a neighbour very kindly lent me this. And I tried to get something similar on eBay. I found something for £10. <laughs> I ended up with this. <laughs> it's basically the same thing I just it was so heavy this thing is enormous and I just look at it and I just think how can you take that and turn it into that I mean obviously they turned that into that over a period of time um, but it just mind-boggling. I mean, this thing is, is, I don't know how many kilos it is. It's got a bit about 10 kilo. And then I looked inside and it all kind of made sense. So there's the transport and it does accept DV and mini DV tapes. Um, but look, the engineering in this is amazing. Um, there's the power supply. And you've got all these boards. And each of the boards pops out so that, because obviously these things were really expensive when they were new, if a component fails, all you have to do is switch out the board or repair the board. You don't need to service the entire thing. So if this machine was designed for broadcast use or studios rather than home use or convenience, such as one of those, or that would actually be for a, a you know a roving reporter or whatever. If this is used in a studio, then you can't have any downtime. So it doesn't go as far as having redundant components, but certainly you switch it off, you take off the top, which is four screws, pull out the board, whack in a new one, and Bob's your uncle. It's working. Although, this one is not actually working properly. Um, it did say on the listing that it was spares a repair, but it was saying that there was an error coming up. But actually, there's something wrong with the transport because it's not accepting a tape. I shouldn't have to push any harder than that for the tape to be accepted. So, I'm imagining there's a, probably a quite detailed service manual on this online, so I'm going to see if I can get hold of one. But, I don't know, this is really nice. I really like this just in terms of its beastliness I mean it, it's gigantic but the joke is right the joke is where the, the reason I wanted one of these was to use Firewire to transfer my tape into iMovie on my Mac right and then I can do the processing on them um, on my more recent laptop this thing doesn't even support Firewire. I didn't think such a situation was possible because it's DV. I'm just, I'm just astounded. I mean, you've got, you know, all of the professional, really professional outputs and inputs. I mean, it's got S video, but Jesus, who wants to record from DV onto S video? I don't know. Maybe but there is. You can get a converter. You can get like a bridge that goes from SDI output and there's a digitizer bridge which um, would plug into Firewire um, but they're, they're, they're quite expensive um, so yeah I'm going to have a go at fixing this hopefully it will go better than the last one which was just really annoying but um, I'm just glad that I've got my tapes backed up now
I can actually load a tape partially if I push it in just the right place. I have to be quite firm though. Here we go. Oh, I spat it straight out. Hang on. Oh, right, okay. So, we've got an error. Error 20911. Now I can check the service manual to see what that means. Service manual confirms main code 20 and then it said 111 followed immediately by 911. So, fail to complete the cassette down or up motion within the specified time. That's definitely the problem. So then it's just a question of how to resolve that problem. So I guess this is what I'm going to be doing next. Well, that was ridiculously straightforward. I thought I'd have to remove the entire drive mechanism, but actually the loading mechanism, entirely separate piece of kit. And now we can see quite clearly there is something awry with that. So there might be some more dismantling in order. We do have some progress. Um, as in it looks better. The tape loads without really any force, but it is just inserting and ejecting with no error, which is unusual because before we had an actual error saying that, it, that the mechanism wasn't going down in time and now it's not loading down. Right, thankfully this thing works out of the unit so now I can see what's going on underneath. I mean, it's really hard to tell what is going on with this thing to be honest. It's complicated, it's because it's clever. There is a definitely a deeper problem here. The problem I'm fixing is a symptom of another problem. So, great. The problem with troubleshooting this when it's um, operating is that uh, the automated functions will, will cause the, um, the loader to retract if it encounters a problem which means that the, the actual problem is instantaneous and is difficult to identify. And it's pretty standard procedure with uh, tape loading mechanisms to apply voltage to the loading motor. Um, you can turn the worm gear here. You could do it manually, but oh my God, that is abominably slow. So we can apply voltage directly This, bewilderingly, is preventing the loading mechanism from dropping. This has been doing my head in. I've just been looking at it, just like staring. Like, what, why, why doesn't, what the, what, why, it's, yeah. But I worked it out. This part. follows the rails into the down position. It's not up because it's upside down. And this stays. This pushes that, but this ain't moving. And I worked out why. Because this plastic clip should be on top. So all I have to do is pop that out here and then it should move. And it's going, it's going, it's going, and it's, oh, I let go. And the voltage isn't powerful enough to move the mechanism anymore. That's annoying, so I'll just turn the worm gear. And there it goes. Yes. Okay. Moment of truth.
shit. Finally found the root cause. I was unhappy about this thing flapping about so much anyway because the lever for the mechanism that stops you putting in the tape when there's already a tape in there was popping into this hole and that's what was getting stuck and that's why it was all going wrong. This little rod, this little pin, is missing its retaining clip. So I don't know where that's gone. I found this on the side, so maybe, I don't know, maybe it's around somewhere. Or maybe it wasn't there to begin with. But I'm definitely going to need to pop that back on so that um, it works properly. That's why it didn't load. So I'm not a complete idiot after all. Uh, and it's not completely unsavable after all. So fingers crossed. I think I may have found a solution. This thing had a little thing on top with a hole in it and I, I just saw it and I thought, hmm, that looks about the right size. So I snipped it off, tied it up a bit and snapped it on and it's staying, but I can pop it off with my finger. So what I'm thinking is if I put the soldering iron on it, melt it a bit, that should seal it in and then we'll test it and see if it works. Okay, so that seems to have worked. It's not coming off as easily as it was before, um, but it is spinning freely and there's enough clearance. So let's put it in and see how it performs. I'm in truth part two. <laughs> I think we're in business. Shit. That's a different error. Progress. So the good news is the tape transport is working fine. And the actual feeding mechanism is not. Some things not right there. Brilliant! This is becoming a pain in the arse. Mechanisms have always been my weak point. Anyway, um, it's got a maintenance manual. I've entered a checking mode for the threading motor and that's not completed. That ring should move further than that. So there's some kind of obstacle. If the threading motor does not rotate, check whether the threading motor, the driver circuit, and the sensors are defective. Check also the threading FG amplifier circuit and the sensor. Okay. Right, I've checked the voltage and amperage of these terminals which control the motor for the threading mechanism and they read good. I just think it's out of alignment because it's rubbing there where it should have clearance. So I don't know, do I need to take the whole thing apart? <laughs> Mechanisms. Yeah, looks like a right faff to me. Oh well, better go on with it. Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the threading ring itself. Nothing has fallen out or broken off when I've taken it apart. So, you know, sometimes take something apart and put it back together again, works fine. So I guess, guess that's what I'm doing. Well, there's far too much play in this. I don't like it. Shouldn't be doing that at all, it should be tight. So that's part of the problem, is that the tension of the mechanism is pushing it out of place and it's getting stuck. I think that roller is to blame. Well, such a tiny 
seemingly insignificant part. It's got one tiny bit of plastic missing from it and has brought this entire unit to its knees. <laughs> oh dear. How am I going to replace that then? I'll have to try and, I don't know, maybe a 3D print one. Don't know anyone with a 3D printer though. Shit. <laughs> I turned it upside down. So now, no play whatsoever. And hopefully that isn't going to cause a problem with the, uh, with the ring now, because it's not dropping. That's the problem before it was dropping and coming out of alignment. Whereas now it's not dropping and it's unlikely to lift. So mm, maybe we've done it at last. <sighs> right. Better put this thing back together then, eh? That was a pain. <laughs> Because you have to get all the gears in the right position and everything, but that's pretty awesome. Time coat's off, but it's working. <laughs> I can't believe it. Anyway, that's how you fix a, uh, a DV deck. Never again. <laughs>